Not quite. That's funny. So I did do something exciting this weekend. I don't know if you guys did. Did you watch the the splashdown yesterday? Yes. Just saw the pictures. That was that was super cool. Oh yeah, it was awesome. What? Yeah. The, it was a it was a it was a water, there's in, a water park in, in, in tribute uh, in Pensacola. Okay. There you oh, go. nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, that was name cool. the character. Oh, <laughs> Mario. I don't mean Mario. Oh. My God, it's full of stars. Yeah. Well, that part I can read, but I don't know where it's from. <laughs> yeah, what's that from? Dave oh, Bowman, movie. 2001, Space Odyssey. The movie. Oh. Yeah. When he's going into the monolith at the end of the movie. My God, it's full of stars just before he disappears. How could you not watch the splashdown, Sean? I mean, that was, like, historic. It was. It was I was weird. watching my computer come together. Okay. Well, and that was that was like that. Hang on. Two cores of badass. Well, and just before we start here, so I of course I have the space theme. <laughs> yeah. Nice question. Yeah. So I just read an article, like we saw like, how um, the U.S. military released that video of that UFO that they tracked out over the Pacific. Uh, you know the the oblong shape and. Anyway, that that was cool, but there's uh, there was some other non news thing saying that uh, it, it was kind of a a partial statement that the U.S. government sort of admitted to um, finding and will they say soon be sharing details on alien spacecraft that were recovered or mm-hmm. something. Okay. So yeah, yeah, it's part it's part of that same. Uh, a statement of like, hey, the government's going to start relieve, you know, releasing more and more of that info. Um, but then the statements are kind of half baked, so you're like, yeah, what is it really? Yeah, so. they're out there. Hey, I don't mock my out, pulling right? in important transformative news from social media. Come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> Hal, you ever see any of that stuff flying over your place? UFOs? No, I haven't. Um, Darn. Around Let's here, not your trailer it's, park. Well, there's, there's so <laughs> there's so much air activity here anyway. The thing of it is, I'm uh, my little house sits right in the landing pattern for uh, Tucson International. So, oh wow, <laughs> uh, a dozen, fifteen, twenty times a day, I've got an aircraft either either landing over top of me or leading over top of me. So, yep. It's, <laughs> Thank you for that, that, actually, that reenactment there, Sean. <laughs> yeah, can we get that again? Wow, that was. Uh, there's a lot happening there when you do that. It's, <laughs> hey, well, thanks for everybody for coming. We do have some people that are watching the live stream already, but uh, uh, this is the Microsoft you, Office Hours. Yes. Right. Hello. Throwing that Hello. out. There. Hello. What are we here to and, do? Yeah, so we have some questions, and and just before you join, Eric, I was mocking you for, uh, for uh, uh, complaining about just receiving the questions. Jeez, was. <laughs> Didn't I, have time to prep. Am I supposed to be surprised by this? No, you are not. It's just a statement of fact. It wasn't really a mock. It was. It was, uh, or it wasn't really a complaint. It was. It was a statement of fact, much like your yeah, responding true. statement of fact. That's right. Hey. Hey, what? Hey, I did actually like review last week's the first half with yeah, you sorry, guys. I get back to you. And I did oh, my boy. task. Did I you? did my task. We you assigned did. you a task. Yeah. Yes, we <laughs> did. Email. email address. Oh yes, yes. This don't ask. If you don't want it, don't ask for it. Oh, exactly. It's like most <laughs> things in my life. It, it it arrives and I say, "How did this get here?" And then somebody yeah. has to remind me that I requested it. Yeah. That's right. awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, what a problem. Yeah. Really so, so that we just start sharing that out there broadly since we all now receive it, all the regulars here, and we'll add other people to the list. So we'll like, well, I probably won't ask. I'll just add Neil. Uh, yeah, but we'll, so you can now email us with your questions as well. If you see these, so you can re- email us anytime during the week, uh, but office hours at collabtalk.com. And it will reach the panel, all of us. And uh, so we should be able to respond. And those questions, which we may have already answered in advance, we can then you know discuss in the uh, 
uh, in the next week's call. So, yeah. Does, it mean, it does it mean we've like arrived if we now have a email address for our, our little soiree we do here? I think it only means we can spam. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think I think the definition of uh, have having arrived though would be that we have office hours T-shirts or hats. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh oh, so, yeah. sensing that's, a challenge there. That's big. <laughs> so what what Christian means by that is just to be clear for those <laughs> that are tuning in, uh, if anybody wants to, if anybody wants to support uh, the, <laughs> the collab talk. Uh, Where's this going, Riz? Vision of office hours. Uh, you know, put your logo on the back and, and yeah. uh, good, fun, exciting things on the front. And Buckley Planet can go right on we, the back. You know, I, I, I've got the perfect artwork. We could just extend the sticker. <laughs> oh, boy. That would be, that That's would be a good, good one. one if, yeah. So that, that would be a fun one. You know, we could do. So, <laughs> so before, before we get into uh, the question and answer section of the, the program today, I wanted to ask how many of uh, how many of you, as I'm looking at you guys, have, have played with together mode in teams? Yet, yet. Nope. I don't even think it's available on my sub yet. Al's got it uh, together. So I've, I've got, got it. it. I've got yeah, it. You guys are. Have to throw. Yeah, I'm using it right now. You guys are all in it. So I'm going to take a photograph. So well, how about that? Everybody smile. And what does the well, together smile or, us? A smile or, or whatever that was. So we're uh, we're in, we're we're on it right now right. for the uh, for the recording. And your phone it. is your yes. phone here. It, it blocks it out, Eric. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just a minute. Every, oh wow, that's really weird. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll work on that. You can post so. the picture. I yeah. can post the picture. So that's good. So we're I we're post it. So so right now, Sean and I are in the back row, and then three of you are in the middle row. So that's right. Uh, there is a switch switch you have to throw if you've got to, to, to get the together mode and the separate uh, meeting pop out to work. It's uh, if you go into settings general, there's a new checkbox at the bottom called turn on new meeting experience new meetings and calls will open in separate windows requires restarting teams you click that restart teams and then you'll have the together mode, gallery mode and the pop what does together meeting. mode get you it gets you a a stadium seating like view of all your participants if, if you want to see it oh, shot okay. go into the office 365 community and that's what we're live streaming right now yeah yeah but don't actually flip the switch right now because then you have to restart teams and yes. Teeper yeah. did this over the weekend um, for the NBA game. Yeah. yeah so for, for those who for those who are watching the NBA games, this is what they're doing for the for the fan, yeah, I thought it fan cool experience. Was out. <laughs> yep. yeah, compared to watching the baseball players with their cardboard cutouts, that 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 teams display was slick. I, I really liked that. Yes, yep. I agree. Or you can watch the hockey games where they have all of the uh, because of the camera angles, they have to have all the the seats there. Otherwise, you it's too close. You would be able to to experience the game. So they just covered them all up, <laughs> which looks totally natural, of course. Eric, is that is that ice hockey you're talking about? Ice the, the very same <laughs> ice hockey. Uh, all right, the, the National Hockey League actually. So, but before we uh, we jump to the list of questions, uh, so we have one that uh, uh, Wasif just asked a question. Yeah. Um, says TLS having issues not be not able to send email to Microsoft.com only when TLS set to require set to required. Thoughts on it? Um, I'm thinking it's a transient blip. TLS has not been required in the past. Um, what did you say it was? Because that sounded like something that you could use penicillin to clear up. <laughs> a transient blip. <laughs> I had that <laughs> once. Awful. Awful. I'm pretty sure ticks carry that. <laughs> the machine that goes ping. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically encrypting the email message when it goes. Um, Typically, you need SMTP encryption or authentication to get stuff relayed. But um, 
not to send out of your domain and whatnot. So I'm not sure what's going on there, Wasif. How about you, Mr. Nelson? Any and thoughts? Considering I'm thinking exchange server protocol, that really doesn't enter the picture anyway. No. Unless he's unless he's trying to set something up SMTP or IMAP. Yeah, or pop. Yeah. Pop. Oops. Great song about hats. Anybody else hearing that? Yeah. What? Yeah. Wow, that's loud. That was that was odd. It's almost like a white noise machine. Yeah. Almost. Somebody rubbing up against the mic. <laughs> Somebody got All a right. cat. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, yeah. Go. Don't go there. Don't go there. Dog. <laughs> All right, so we've got so some qu keep, other questions here. Let's uh, it jump clean, to... Keep it clean. What? Keep it clean. I was just yeah. reminding everybody okay. to keep it clean. Yes, Fair thank enough. you. Thank you, Eric. We really appreciate that. Uh, yeah. That, Language. And, that, and now that I've provided my one piece of value for today, I'm going to say goodbye. And... <laughs> we got a couple of really long questions here. This, this one um, uh, is from Andrew says, uh, I work from home and I have a license for 365, which covers five devices and has it installed on three PCs. Uh, just put a new SSD in my main PC and reinstalled Office, but can no longer add my work's email account. He, so he goes through that he's tested out. You guys have the email with the description here. Enter the email address and password. It keeps coming up with something went wrong and Outlook couldn't set up your account. So he's tried adding count via Outlook and ver via control panel. It worked fine on PC. He reinstalled Windows 10 in Office, uh, has stumped his company IT department. Um, so he, he says, I also have Office 2019 that I installed after removing 365. It still have the same problem. All updates are done for Windows 10 and Outlook. Web mails unaffected as can access the email via a browser. My personal Gmail accounts and your know, work fine in Outlook, but can't add the work email. Any ideas? So there was Open a tool. Cash. There was a tool a while ago that Microsoft put out that was the um, part of uh, who was that? The Outlook Connectivity Toolkit or Troubleshooter? Yeah, it's like a diagnosis tool. Uh, that's yeah. a remote connectivity analyzer. Yeah, something like that. I, I'm sorry, I'd have to Google it and, and try and remember what it was, but. I remember I solved this. Yeah, I solved a similar issue by putting in the email address into this uh, tool, and then it went out and it gave you a full diagnostic of how it was trying to communicate um, yep. to 365, uh, and then it would come back and say that you know password incorrect or app password required, you know MFA is enabled, blah blah blah, all that kind of fun stuff. I don't know if he's tried that tool. Help Links them. in the chat right now. Uh, uh, Testconnectivity.microsoft.com yeah. test forward slash 0365. True that, Mr. Nelson. That tool is good. It looks at your account from the client side, uh, you know, checks out whether your password might be locked, um, if your tokens line up, all that sort of stuff. The other is to um, dump, if you added the account to Windows, um, you might just try taking it out of Windows and adding it to Office and then adding it back to Windows or deleting the token um, that's stored within the operating system. Um, sometimes those get out of sync, and I know with multiple IDs on my machine, I oftentimes get into a situation where I'll be supplying the correct password and it'll just barf on me. So... This reminds me, I mean, a while back it was, when they, yeah, when they first started to have problems with uh, auto discover, because auto discover was always a, a PETA, you know, it was always, yeah, where it came out, auto discover was just a pain. Yep. And that, that causes a lot of problems. I know if it's not set up correctly in DNS and all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah. I know the syskit tools people have asked me, you know, what one thing could they do to make, uh, Office 365 better, or more manageable in terms of tools. I'm like, if you could do something that would let users know the status of all their services, like just a little dashboard or something so that 
a user, a plain old user, can look at it and see green, 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 red, yellow, green, green, something like that. That would be worth its weight in gold. But I know that's chasing a, a dragon. You can get it for now, but you wouldn't be able to necessarily future-proof it. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like a third-party partner tool opportunity. Indeed it does, Christian. Yeah. And there's also yet a, another uh, business idea that we've had to develop. Yeah. Sorry, Hal, what did you say? I said there's also Microsoft support and recovery assistant that you can download that will also help with Outlook issues, connectivity <laughs> issues. Yeah, usually that's after the fans go down, uh, the flames go down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Smoking pile. All right. Uh, next question up. Uh, Steve asks, um, I'm dealing with a user issue in which one particular participant in a nine person meeting is not being able to see all the other participants cameras. Uh, even though all cameras are on, the other members of the meeting can see each other's cameras. Has anyone had this issue? Uh, going to troubleshoot by turning on the new meeting experience and clear the team's cache. Um, but if you had that where cameras are on and it's not If it seen? affects one person, it's probably their connection. Well, one person not being able to see anything that so everybody else can turn, see. Turn it off and on and again. Yeah, yeah. Check the power. I didn't wear that T-shirt today, but I, yeah. 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 I mean, I gotta admit, the first, the last couple of weeks, two weeks, uh, my webcam has been really flaky, and I've had to switch over to my other webcam because Teams is coming back saying I don't see the, your your camera, even though the lights are on. I mean, I got a blue halo light, you know, yeah. around the Logitech uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, but it's uh, Teams comes back and says, can't you know? It has a message across the top that says can't use your camera you know, your camera's not available or whatever, yeah. I have to switch. So, it, I mean, you kind of troubleshooted it down to a single user or uh, one person that's having the issue, obviously. So that's, uh, I'd find out if they're, maybe they have another camera they can try. It's, well, um, I would take it back a step two. Sorry, Sean, I, I take it back a step two. Are they, are they on desktop? Are they on the web? Try their phone. Yeah, you could even try their phone and see if they can get that that thing to work. I know the Logitech cameras. Um, there is a resolution to uh, a nagging regular problem that sometimes, sh well, rag a nagging regular problem that sometimes shows up. A sometimes problem that when it shows up, it um, <laughs> renders your camera unusable. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Agreed, I'm getting there. Get to um, the point, John. <laughs> you, by switching the driver to the more generic USB driver versus the Logitech driver, oftentimes that'll re enable the cable or camera, not cable. Mm -hmm. Got all kinds of wires crossed it, today. It, it rhymed um, better, <laughs> re enable the cable, <laughs> while wearing my sable. <laughs> I am unable. To form complete sentences. I'm yeah, actually, I mean, we should get a hook, a virtual hook, that just yeah, like the yeah. Gong Show. Yeah, uh, I think we've already accomplished too, the Gong Show, but yeah. yeah. One other thought too is if you do have multiple cameras, is make sure that you have the right one selected. We've talked about it in a few different sessions how uh, the 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 lie that was plug and play. It's uh, I think it's plug the and pray. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the reality is that if you're during your day, you're switching between applications uh, and teams, uh, it works like this too, is, is that you have the settings right and uh, go and turn off and come back to the applications and the settings could revert back to previous settings. So if you have multiple, that, that's another cause, because that's happened with me where I go in, I only use, uh, is this is my primary, I have a secondary one that I just unplug to keep life simple when I'm not using it um, because it seems to default to that crappier older Logitech and doesn't stick with my primary. Another thought too is if it's a USB camera, um, selective USB suspend and power save. Um, sometimes those features if enabled will cause cameras to go offline and other devices to not function properly. So you might check 
um, those settings. That's typically accessed through Device Manager um, well, for the uh, item you're looking at. A reg edit on the power level for USB. That's a reg. That requires a reg edit. So, I mean, you you can flip the switch inside of the control panel, but it doesn't get flipped in registry. So when you reboot, it doesn't take effect. That was a common issue with early builds of Windows 10. But it, it, you should be able to access it through Device Manager, assuming you've got the necessary rights on your system. In Device Manager, I don't think you can change settings for it, though, because you just bring up the information for the device. Actually, you can. Um, okay. Device Manager, yeah. You can report on things, and many of the hardware items that have drivers that have settable properties, um, you can get another tab for those devices. Yeah, I'm just saying that it, if it doesn't, in early builds, like 1809, they had a problem where you had changed inside of power. You could say USB devices um, can go to sleep. It was under sleep or something like that. Right. And you, you change that to, to off or, or false or whatever it was, and then you reboot, it wouldn't, it wouldn't stick. Oh, okay. A registry edit was required. So, I, yeah, I apologize. I was thinking of, you know, control panel into the power, not control panel and device manager. Yeah. Well, who's on 1809 anyway? Uh, you would believe there are many companies that are still on 1809, and that's yeah. just because they can't, uh, they can't, they can't go as fast as other. You know, they're not even. On, 2004 is like another year away for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If my wife were here right now. She'd be going wah 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 wah. wah. LTSB. That's, I mean, that's it's that's, that's what you're gonna do. LTSB. I got a yep from the kitchen. <laughs> 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 so I have a related question on that, if yeah. I could. Go for it. Um, when I go into my device settings on Teams, it has a camera profile under audio devices because my cameras obviously can do audio, right? You have webcams that can do audio. Mm -hmm. But when I want to use my other camera, all I can do is custom setup. So why why do they have, I mean, how does Teams, and, you know, maybe I'm going too deep here, but it's how does Teams actually create these setups? I mean, if the first box says audio devices, and then you can pick a setup. Yeah, the I think it's maybe selecting a particular driver set, um, and that driver registers um, a profile for uh, communications versus just uh, like audio listening or something like that. And if the driver registers a profile set, you can select that as an audio device and it'll pre-populate the speaker and microphone. It almost seemed like a profile type thing because I should be able to change. It's almost like, you know, you want to you want to have your speaker and your microphone and your camera. And then there's even the, the app settings, the theme, you know, dark light, whatever. That should be like a profile. Yeah. You know, it should be you should be able to just hit that drop down and be able to change it to whatever you want. Well, I found it's very forced gumpish. Yeah. yeah. Like a bo <laughs> box of chocolate, you know. You yeah. turn on Teams, you never know what you're going to be talking into or what's going to be listening. That's teams like, is like forced gump. So it, that's that's why I have the other device unplugged. But yeah, it's it's interesting that I have like my speaker options. That's a great point, Mike, is because I have so both of my <laughs> white monitors Power have, of coffee. <laughs> have, uh, have speakers you don't know you know, inside. That, I, that I can use. But I've actually, I've actually had the experience where it's, it's pulled the microphone from my Logitech. I, I use the, just to the side here, I use my USB mic. But it has in the past pulled my mic from the, uh, from the Logitech. Um, I don't know if it only recognizes that when I have my USB mic unplugged because it doesn't even show up as a microphone option, mm. uh, although it has defaulted to that on occasion. Yeah. Do you guys have discrete sound cards? No. No. <clears throat> Motherboard sound. We don't, I don't use okay. it. My, my sound card specifically said it's indiscreet, so it <laughs> tells everything to everyone. Um, I'm trying to determine if these are USB devices, if you're using an onboard, um, you know, real tech chipset or something like that, because I think that affects it too. That sounds, how the that, driver that sounds made up, Sean. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Christian, 
Christian, was that you, was that was that the experience you were talking about there? Yeah. I just want to be sure I understood you. Your Uh-oh, complaint. somebody's oh, like buzzword bingo. Oh, we're giving everybody an experience right now. That's for sure. Everybody. Hey, there was a, a question that came up here, and I, we might need backup some uh, further inquiry here. Um, but uh, Zoe, uh, in the comments in the live stream, says how to copy contents of earlier event into another new event, and Event as in for Teams? Yeah. So uh, so I'm assuming live event in Teams. How do you yeah. copy contents? Yeah. <laughs> uh, copy, paste in a notepad, and then copy it back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you can't, I mean, in Zoom, you can actually create a template. Right. So you create a meeting template that has all the settings, and you just change the title, or you change, do whatever. I don't think you can do that in Teams yet. Has there been any discussion about, um, uh, of adding that kind of uh, meeting templates and teams, I've not, I'm not aware of any. That might be a user voice around that. I don't know. I don't place that much value on meetings. <laughs> oh boy, it's kind of nice. Like hold a hold a recur uh, a recurring meeting, where you know it might be with different groups of people, right? Okay. So a training meeting, as an example, that I do every month. In, the, in from a corporate standpoint is I want to use the same template, but I don't want to call the same name and it's not going to the same people. Yep. So I want those two to be variables that Makes I can just plug in and have everything else static. So. Sure. I always, I always use it as an example, um, uh, a project management organization. And one of the things that when I used to consult and build out PMOs for companies uh, and advise them on, you know, understand their methodology, all of their standard documentation, all that kind of stuff, it, as it translates into a, a SharePoint and then a Teams world is create these templates for every new project, every new product site that's created has the same channels, has the same tabs, has the third party apps. Uh, you might also then want to create templates around those meetings. So have specific, you know, scrum sessions, have uh, design reviews, things like that you might want to structure. So I, there are a lot of companies that are that uh, organized and want to have that dictated. So that uh, you think about that, if I go into any recording of a product review and that the the format of those meetings are similar enough that I'm confident that two years down the road, I can go in and I, I had a client that was like this. It was in the pharmaceutical had hundreds of different products that they, this was just in the SharePoint world, but er, you go into any one of the uh, subsites for each of those individual projects, uh, products, and it was exactly the same outline. So I knew where to go to see the ingredients. I saw the team meeting minutes, everything was run the same way. Uh, nice. and it was, a, it was very organized. Nobody's got their stuff together. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah. So, I, yeah, so we, <laughs> that's the answer to that question is uh, you can't. We know, Sean. We know. Sean, you just disappeared and reappeared. My sticker. One of my stickers. Oh. Um, all right. So, let me jump back over to the next question. Um, so here's another longer one. I think this is the longest of the questions for the day, but it's a good question. Uh, it's a SharePoint permissions question. Okay. So it's from Dave. Everybody has it on there. It says, but I'm posting to try and get an idea of how other people are approaching the problem of assigning permissions in the modern SharePoint online world. Uh, since we now aim to build sites com- composed of many site collections rather than subsites, Managing permissions needs to be centralized in Office 365. Otherwise, we end up managing permissions across many site collections. That just seems less of a question and just very soapboxy, very preachy. Um, <laughs> it was more of a statement. <laughs> yes. More of a statement. Uh, so the approach we've been taking is to create Office 365 security groups and add these groups to SharePoint and permission groups. Sometimes the security groups are nested. So far, so good. However, I'm running into real problems with the reliability of this approach. For a start, there's a long delay on adding users to the Office 365 security groups and the user getting access to SharePoint, presumably some time sync happening behind the scenes. Secondly, the check permissions function in SharePoint is either massively unreliable, 
uh, or some permissions are not getting added at all. No matter how long I leave it, some users added through security groups never show up as having permissions. We've all experienced that. Uh, this leads to users being temporarily dropped directly into SharePoint groups, and hence security governance takes a hit. Has anyone else encountered this? Do you have advice to give? Yes. All right. Good answer. All right. Next question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Check. Check. <laughs> security groups in SharePoint are good. You've got to watch the level of nesting in your groups. Adding groups into groups becomes very convenient, you know, in an inception sort of way to get groups of people access within SharePoint. But many different pieces of SharePoint don't necessarily dig down to the lowest level in which you might have a, a, a group nested. So it's not going to recursively parse your um, permissions tackles you get to a group it might see a group and say okay this group has access blah but if a user is in that group and it doesn't go so far as to resolve the user you might have a problem so it depends <laughs> here we go again it depends go. it depends on where you're seeing the problem i mean groups the idea of security groups and you know now that we're in Office 365, it's Azure security groups or Office 365 groups. On-prem, it was um, AD groups. AD groups into uh, SharePoint security groups, you're simply placing the burden of administration of security on the AD admins rather than the SharePoint folks. And there's nothing wrong with that. Every organization has different ways of doing it, but the level of nesting is what I'm getting to here. Is it, it's you got to watch that how far down you try to do this. Does that make sense? At points, <laughs> you don't want to be inside of a group, inside of a group, inside of a group that is added to a group that is added to a something. See that that was a short answer. You could have just gave that. We could have moved on, but that's okay. You know. I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> And Mike, if, if, we, if we had known that 20 minutes ago, then we'd all be living a different life right now. But alas, here we are. The atrocity of verbosity. Uh, Old diarrhea. Let's all take a moment and pray after that one. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, before we jump to the next question, I know that uh, so we had answered early on uh, Wasif and, and uh, Tamir. Uh, if you've got any follow-ups, I know you guys have asked a couple other questions. I'm not sure if we addressed any of those follow-up questions, so feel free to uh, ping us again. And and again, those that are watching, you can also email the group, this panel, uh, at uh, officehours at collabtalk.com. And you can email us uh, anytime during the week, and we'll respond. And um, the question will be, how, how soon we'll see... Um, like, hey, would you like uh, to pay for our lead gen service, our email list? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's we coming. start getting that spam. Yeah, so that would be great to see. Um, all right. Uh, so I know that we, we don't typically handle the telephony calls because we don't have any telephony folks on here. Not Like my, my telephony experience ended in 2001. I have um, experience. I spent the first decade of my career in, in the telecom space, most of it the telecom space. Our um, and cables. Yeah. There, go, there goes Hal. Yep. Uh, so telephony. Justin, yeah, he's just not make himself available for that. Um, that, that, would, that would actually be kind of a funny thing, like turn off our camera for those questions that we don't want to participate. <laughs> <laughs> the screen's gone blank. It's, Yep. I, I actually do that on uh, family Skype calls and we, we usually every Sunday and my kids and their spouses and, and uh, some, some of my, you know, my in-laws and stuff on there. And uh, somebody will say like, Hey dad to me, he's like, can you do something for me? And I'll just turn off my camera. <laughs> <laughs> dad. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So Justin asks, uh, anyone else have trouble adding phone lines to teams 
and getting no location, even though I've created several locations. Um, he says, I am in a Gucci environment. I don't know what that means. If yeah. he works for Gucci or if he's, is that something the kids say now that, oh, it's, it's so Gucci. It's posh. <laughs> you think that's like a really fancy phone? I, I, I don't know. Does Gucci make a phone? Uh, uh, is there a license add-on I need for this? <laughs> uh, That's one aspect of teams I haven't played with yet. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you know, we'll have to. We need to get, like, uh, uh, Jonathan McKinney or Adam Ball or, or one of the, uh, you know, the UC people that live and breathe this telephony stuff. Or maybe we get Tom Arbuthnot on this. And, and all three of those people, you can go and Google them and look them up, all three MVPs, and, and will likely be able to answer that question in like 30 seconds. Um, so sorry, Justin. Yeah. We're not phone guys. We're not. But I just gave you three names of people that you can definitely help you. I don't uh, know, but I know someone who will. Exactly. Uh, Dwight asked the question, can anyone direct me on how to see who attended a meeting? Ideally, I am starting, I'm looking for a report that I can download to Excel, but would be okay with anything. And I know that there are a lot of requests for additional analytics for meetings and Team live meetings, events. Yeah. Um, I don't know where that is. Up. Yeah. Let me go out to the roadmap. Yeah. in a live meeting, you can do it, but you can't do it in a regular meeting my understanding so a live meeting you have to input you know or allow those email addresses in order to stored um but i don't know how to extract them i know that when i attended a live meeting uh via teams they said that they had collected all the email addresses of the people that attended i don't know how they did that though yep and the other thing that's going on too is because i was asking questions around Teams analytics and planner, some of the data that's captured around planner and was told by a product team member that a lot of the things that I was asking for were being captured, but were uh, not yet exposed through the graph through the API. So um, there are there, future plans yet. and yeah. Everything is being captured, Christian. Yeah. I mean, even our video, our audio, everything, our mm -hmm. chats, that's all being it, you know, that's all data that's being put on, on a hard drive somewhere. Oh, uh, I know, but it's but it's Amazon with the device that's over there across the room. That's where yeah. oh, the yeah. A. <laughs> we say the A in our house. Yeah, the A. You have to be careful. I won't say their names out loud because then they will wake up and <laughs> bad things will happen. Yeah. So the answer to that is, uh, you know, anything on the roadmap? Did you see anything, Sean? Um. Updated feature, this is already launched. Usage reports will add access for admin roles. Productivity score updates, yeah. e-discovery, but nothing more specific. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, you know. I know there was a their thread. It was two, three weeks back uh, conversation that was happening on one of the MVP lists, but I, I'm just not aware of anything public. We, we all know uh, a bunch of the... Uh, uh, you know, analytics people, the, the, the Power BI folks um, from the community, fellow MVPs who are watching these things very closely. And uh, I know this is one of those things where I, if we are not sure if something's been released, that's because it's not been released because the fanfare would have been huge around it. I think we'd all know. I agree. Um, but somebody let us know if we're incorrect there, if, if there is info out there. I'm uh, combing over the broader list right now. If I see anything, I'll let you know. Yeah, we've got a, a quite a few folks that are uh, watching in multiple locations on the live stream. So if you do have any questions, let us know. Um, otherwise, I'll jump. Uh, just jump in if you find something, Sean, but I'll move on to the next one. Sure. Um, so here's so we've had some similar or repeated questions, but that's all fine. That's fine. James asks, does anyone know a way of automatically adding custom tabs onto a channel the moment it's created? I have a client asking to have specific tabs added to every channel, no matter who adds them to their team. 
There's plenty online about how to create channels programmatically, but I can't find a way of triggering something like this. So here's the difference though, like, cause the most of the feedback on this question was, well, yeah, you can go and create templates for teams and there are things that are available that, that are out there. Yes, but this is, you know, specifically talking about um, when somebody adds a new channel, um, and so I'm assuming that's, you know, anywhere. You, you, I, I don't believe that you can have an automatic trigger or template specifically for a channel. It would have to be at the new creation of the team to create those channels and the tabs that would be attached. Once it's created and people are in there using it, if I go add a new channel, it will not then automatically go and add those other components. Channels are maintained as folders, right? Backend implementation SharePoint is <coughs> at one Correct. point. Yep. Yep. So I'm thinking you could hotwire a um, Power Automate to respond to a folder creation event in SharePoint and potentially capture that data and then move it along in a process if you want. I'd have to you know, see what it's doing, but I think you might be able to do that. Hmm. It's probably not the prescribed use, but the off-brand use. I think JD so. Doctor. I know of a couple of companies who have, uh, it, it's not, it's not hot wiring. They've just, they've just customized some provisioning services and, uh, and wired some, some of that stuff in just like when, uh, every time a channel is created, uh, the, the mirror image is created through OneNote. Um, so I don't know, Buckley, what's the, what's the best practice here? Do you want to, should I drop a hint as to who's doing it? Do you want to, does that user or well, person want to, we, we can want to email? Other stuff. That's fine. You know, I have some knowledge, whatever you're comfortable with sharing. Feel I, free. I am so comfortable. So I would, <laughs> I'd reach out to, uh, to Peter Carson at Envision IT. Cause I know they're, they're doing a ton of customization there to, better the experience all around. Sorry, yeah, Peter. Pete, Peter and team are doing a bunch of webinars and stuff. In fact, you guys just did that, uh, the maturity model um, webinar and that, is that recording out there yet? Not yet. Okay, yeah, so we, uh, yeah, I didn't see it come through, but uh, yeah, that, that'll be a good one to put point people towards. But yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff that's happening around the provisioning process, but so it sounds like, you know, yeah, you can create something in, in theory. We just need, if anybody's done this, you know, what we're talking about, trigger based on the creation of a new folder, go and create new tabs within the related channel. I'd like to see it working. It's, uh, it's dubious advice from Sean yet again, but yes. <laughs> Back alley I'm, stuff. Unproven. I don't the back alley. <laughs> uh, that's what this is, though. This is all back alley help, right? Five finger discount. That's right. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. How are we doing on time? We've got another 15 minutes. So, um, Roman asks a quick question and even phrased it as quick question. No uh, such thing, Roman, but thanks for yeah. trying. Yeah. Is it possible to get email notifications when there is a new comment in an assignment on Planner? Wow, that's deep. New comments. I don't know what the eventing model is for Planner. Not a Planner. I don't think it's not a collab platform, so I don't know. Hold on. Yeah, but you can you can but if you follow an item. You, you guys move on to the next question. I'll go see if I can do it. Okay. You know, good. Come back to that one. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. We'll come back to that in a second, Roman. Uh, Will asked the question, uh, is there any way to alter a team's live event URL so that it skips dead air at the beginning of a recording? So, for example, starts the playback five minutes in. They don't support media or in media links, do they? I wouldn't well, think. So I, I think the simplest solution here is 
well, you're talking about the recording that's over in stream. Go and edit out the dead space. Yep. Then hit save. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure, Will, if there's, if maybe you've not described it fully, the scenario, if it's different than that, but that would be my advice is to edit the video. I did like uh, the question, was it last week, week before last? Um, when, uh, and by the way, folks, we've been doing this. This is our 20th episode, 20th week of doing this. I know, crazy, huh? Boy. Um, so forgive me if I don't remember, it could have been three months ago for all I know. We were talking about um, uh, the permissions around editing and kind of what are the best practices for that. Um, somebody asked a follow-up question. I couldn't find it. Um, just to me individually asking about best practices for giving control for editing. And that's one of those, however you want to set up your permissions and allow people to do it or not, but generally it's the content owner, the meeting owner who captured the recording that owns the permissions of editing that item, unless you have co-presenters, co-organizers that have that admin capability. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that you guys remember that question somebody's asking was like, well, what's kind of the protocol with giving employees, you know, anybody within the org, the ability to go and edit video? Like, why would you do that? Yeah. yeah. Only give edit rights where necessary. Yep. Still need any more time, Eric? Still playing around with that? Yeah, quick answer is no. So no, no. So okay. says no. I'll ask the question again. Is it possible to get email notifications when there's a new comment in the assignment? No, when you when you assign it, but you could follow that that item, can't you? You well, so the so you if you've been follow. assigned to that, yeah, to get a notification. You have to be assigned to get a notification, but I it, it won't update you on additional comments. Right. I don't know if that's something that you could go in there and create if there's some flag or something or other that you'd be, even be able to go in there and create a Power Automate for a notification. Where there's a will, there's a way. Mm -hmm. That would be another interesting thing to go and prove out. In our copious free time. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll, we'll take care of that later. Um, <laughs> Sarah asks, uh, hey, guys, is there a way uh, is there a way to stop kids from kicking others out of meetings? Please let me know. Thanks. And I <laughs> and I you saw my comment in the email. I, so I, I captured a bunch of the questions that people are asking out in the community. And I emailed the team here and uh, I wrote the comment that says, this one is funny, <laughs> not because the person asking uh, is not aware of the admin controls, but because some of her kids or st students, it sounds like, have figured out how to kick other people out. So the, the <laughs> mistake that's made here is that uh, uh, the, these kids that are dialing in have the uh, you know, admin control to be able to boot people from the meeting. They should be members and not admins not organizers and that's the problem don't give them the keys that's really that's really funny it's like these kids that uh for the zoom meetings for school they they figured out how to change their background you know to uh you know yeah. like uh trying to connect or something like that or lost connection or something right? no, it, it said it said reconnecting but it only had one n oh yeah reconnecting yeah <laughs> don't have a typo in your reconnecting message <laughs> That's hilarious. That's, that's, yeah. That's like Flash when, you know, stuff. you get those cool teachers when a kid writes something really funny, you know, uh, like that, just clever. And you just like, okay, I've got to, got to recognize them. It's like you get by one time, I'll give you a passing grade, but you know, just because it's so funny and clever. Yeah. Uh, I remember I was in, I think I was in fourth grade, fifth grade, I just did not want to go to school that day. I don't even remember the reason, but I went and the kids in all the chaos in the morning, I went and 
uh, grabbed my blanket in my pajamas and went behind the couch and there was a heating vent and I just kind of fell back asleep on the, I did this intentionally. And then at like 10 AM, uh, went upstairs and it's just my mom home. And I'm like, why didn't anybody wake me up? <laughs> uh, yeah, man, I, uh, I ended up at school that day anyway. So. The scheming started early. Did didn't quite work out. I thought you were gonna say, I think I have a fever. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you fall asleep on the heating vent, it's it's only one step above putting yeah, a thermometer under the, a lamp, right? Visions of Ferris Bueller here. So anyway, so I so you know again, it, it, my kid, one of my kids, they they all loved school and and never had that problem. Um, but I always thought if they came up with something that brilliant and that it were able to get away with it at that point, so I'd be like. All right, the, today's fine. You're you're at school tomorrow, and and you're grounded. But but good on you. <laughs> yeah. A for effort. Uh, that's right. That's e right. for execution. Uh, that's right. Um, yeah. So Sarah, uh, I'm sure you've had uh, 50 people tell you that it's just uh, change the permissions so they don't have the ability to uh, to shut others out. That's so funny though. Um, Syed has a question. Uh, I'm trying to add a custom word template in SharePoint online using the add template option. However, this new added template is only working for myself and for everyone else, only blank web page is opened. I really appreciate it if you can kindly guide me in the right direction. Also, I've noticed that other users can't even open the document created through this template from admin user. I don't think it could be a permission issue. Could this be? Sounds like a permission issue. Eric Harlan used to say nine out of ten times, if you got a problem in SharePoint, it's permissions. Yep. And the other time, it is permissions. They just didn't realize it. Yeah. That sounds like a very, that sounds classic permissions. It sounds classic Harlan and classic permissions. <laughs> two for two. Yeah. Yeah. So there's something about that. Um, Well, they're using the custom word template. Is there a problem with the way that it's deployed or just the settings that it's uh, only allowing admins? Well, where's the document? You need to know where the document is and what who's got access to it. Does everyone have access to it or the template? I mean, that's the starting point. I'd right. make sure that everyone has access to it. If you've got it in a sort of restricted permission group, then that's going to limit who can use the template. Yeah. I would go down that route. I, it smells like suspicion. It smells like permissions. It smells, uh, yeah. it smells like teen spirit. Yeah. I'm sorry, Sean. What does it smell mm -hmm. like? <laughs> As Christian said, teen spirit. Teen spirit. I thought so. Yeah. Now I want to listen to Nirvana. I was just thinking that. I was like telling people this story. that said my my band back in ninety two, I think, where we played club and we had twice the size of the audience as Nirvana the night before us. <laughs> <laughs> they ended up slightly more successful than us, though. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. So apparently, um, not everybody knows the the work of my cat Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> no. My cat Jeffrey. Yep. Yeah. I'm not gonna ask. Your, your lead singer was DJ that was Krispy that was the I was the lead singer. Yeah, Krispy Kreme. Yes. No, no I, I wasn't Krispy Kreme at that. Well, no, I, Krispy Kreme, Krispy Crisp. Krispy. Come on. Luckily, if you were in if you were in Canada, would, would that make you DJ Tim Horton? Oh boy! <laughs> Thank you. May I have another? <laughs> yeah. So I do have three of the My Cat Jeffrey songs that are over on my SoundCloud, my personal SoundCloud. So, yeah, the crap recordings that are from that same venue where we played with. The night before Nirvana. So, our biggest claim to fame is we were one of the opening bands uh, for Cake. Um, so it was towards the end of our careers. There, we did that for about three, three and a half years. 
And uh, yeah, I kind of miss that. I always credit people people that uh, I don't know about all of you, but uh, received. Uh, I've had people ask, "Is like, don't you get nervous up on stage and presenting?" And I don't. I feel very comfortable up on stage, but a lot of that kind of got burned out of me. That fear from being in the band. I suspect it would have to be. You think? Yeah. Does it, has anybody not gotten that question? I get the question all the time too. Yep, quite a bit, especially after you, uh, you know, when you're having a talk like at uh, Ignite or something like that, and you get some folks that come up and ask you questions, but then you're just kind of walking through the halls and people will be like, hey, I saw you talk, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, I've always wanted to do that. And I'm like, get, get up there and do it. Oh, do I'd, be it. Too, I'd be too afraid. Right. I'd, be, I'd, be too, I'd be too scared. I'm like, well, statistically, the two, the two greatest fears in life are death and public speaking. Yeah. You, this whole thing about imagine people naked you're talking to that doesn't work yeah, it's just, <laughs> certainly doesn't work right now guys i can tell you yeah it doesn't it doesn't work at tech conferences because you know 90 percent 95 percent of the audience is male but uh you know but if if it did there'd be nothing wrong with that right riz now. just so you know yeah. he's like you weren't on that recording but we did have an episode with neil if everyone recalls where Neil Hodgkins was uh, a bit too revealing. Yes, indeed. Did really? I blur it out? I know I covered it with memes. That's right. Yeah, you wanted to do something with it. I memed it out. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, all right. Well, we got a couple of minutes left. What else is happening this this week? And for those that are watching, we uh, will be back again tonight at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific for another uh, second half, the the Asia-Pacific half of this session. But everybody's welcome if you're awake and are, have questions. And you can, of course, send us any of your questions to office hours at collabtalk.com, and we'll, uh, we'll get to those as we receive them. Um, anything else happening this week that's noteworthy, gentlemen? I'm hearing there's going to be some announcements coming out about uh, Ignite very soon. Oh. It's about time. For those who, you know, it's, it's what, six weeks away. So yeah. now is as good a time as any. Uh, but that's, uh, that's the rumor. Well, they waited until like two weeks before Inspire to really start promoting. Yeah, I think AWS reInvent was announced to, to be um, virtual this year, too. So <clears throat> everything's virtual until next year, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Gen Con just concluded. I know it was virtual. However, I am on vacation next week. So I'm, we're taking a car and we're traveling west. And yeah. we're going to the Badlands. The problem is, yeah. is that uh, Sturge is going on at the same time. That yep. They did not Oops. cancel, they did I, not I cancel that. Oh, they didn't? No. Oh, boy. I don't know how they could with that crowd. but I, So I made that <laughs> mistake of... Uh, of traveling through that part of the world, not knowing what uh, at that my first time through the region, what Sturgis was. Yeah, it should be interesting. My wife made all the plans, and then I'm like, um, isn't that you had to check and see if that motorcycle rally is going on at the same time? And she's like, you know, <laughs> but, you, but you got your hotels and everything, or oh, you yeah, camping? yeah, yeah, she had well, all that that's set up. Yeah, because that's that was the issue. Like we tried to, when it was going on for people that don't, uh, don't understand what Sturgis is. Sturgis is a town, and it's the what the headquarters of uh, Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson, yeah. And so it has they have their annual festival, and there are bikers everywhere. So my first time through there, we tried to rent get a hotel on the road traveling east in Billings, Montana. And they were sold out everywhere. We went to like three or four different places, called around. They're like, no, everywhere is filled up. And we said, okay, well, I can still drive for another hour or two. We'll go down into Wyoming and we'll find something that's out in the middle of nowhere. No, it got – everybody was – so we stopped somewhere in Wyoming. And I asked – and I said, do you have anything available? He's like, are you kidding me? I'm like, <laughs> no. Why? It's like, did you not look outside? I'm like, look at what outside? He's like – the motorcycles everywhere. And I said, yeah, I noticed there was a lot, but I just didn't really think <laughs> about it. He's like, you're not going to find a, a, a free hotel room, an open hotel room 
in 500, four or 500 mile radius of Sturgis. And so we slept in the car for two nights. That was fantastic. Ouch. Good times. Uh, yeah, good times. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's an adventure. No, it's, it's right. It's about 30 minutes away from uh, Mount Rushmore. So it's a beautiful area, though. I'll bet. I was just there last weekend. No. Yeah. Anyway, well, gentlemen, hey, we're we're just over. Thanks a lot, everybody, for for joining, and we'll be back at uh, six p.m. And uh, thanks, everybody. Adios. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. See you back at six. <laughs> okay. Anyway, hey, well, thanks everybody for joining. This is Christian Buckley and Hal. We are here. Hal is uh, helping the. Uh, the aged uh, uh, airplanes land there behind. What's the name of that place again? That's the uh, the Davis Month and Air Base Boneyard. That's where they park all the old planes that uh, they don't use anymore. There are acres and acres and acres and quite a few other acres of them. Yeah, that, pretty much anything that you want to look at. I really want to go visit that place, but not this time of year. How, what was your temperature? To, it was like 101 here yesterday. A little bit cooler here today. I think like 97, 98. I don't think it got much above 104 uh, before the clouds rolled in. It's uh, it's pretty thoroughly overcast at the moment. So the temperature's in the high 90s currently. Uh, I think. Let me see. What does the magic box say? Wait, you have a magic box? Yeah, it's called a weather app. Sorry. 92 degrees, it says. It was 104. 104. That's not so bad. Mm. Yeah, I was talking no, to somebody. Uh, so. Yeah, that's the thing. I was talking to somebody uh, in Florida, in Orlando, and we were talking about that. I think earlier this week or late last week, it was like 100 degrees or 101 and like 80 to 90 percent humidity. Uh, not if I can possibly avoid that. I'll take 118 to two at the eight percent in the shade any day, any day. Yeah, I think I've done that a couple times in Tampa. It was just brutal. And then walking around one of the partner conferences that was in Washington D.C. one year, it was that kind of hot and humid, and it was. And if, in fact, my first trip to D.C. it wasn't quite that hot, but it was close. Uh, I was out there as part of uh, like a CPAC event or something or other out when I was living in the Bay Area. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, so not experienced that. I didn't realize how quickly my hair would go flat and my uh, dress shirt, I didn't have a tie on. I took that off before I left the hotel, but just clung to my skin. It yeah. was not a good look, not a good feeling. No. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Um, all right. Well, anybody, so we've got a few people that are watching the live stream. If you have any questions yeah. about Microsoft products and services and would like to ask, we're, we're happy to uh, attempt to answer them. And uh, you can also email us now uh, at officehours at collabtalk.com. And yeah, I'll have to put that on the uh, redo the image and add the email address to that now. And see, nothing, nothing else. We went through and did like a dozen or more questions this morning. Anything that's popped up over the day, Hal, that you want to tackle? Well, that's popped over the, up over the day. No, but it's popped up in the last several days. Uh, either the middle or later of part of last week was that uh, Edge started crashing rather blatantly. Yeah, I read I about that. I saw anything about that or not, but it's... Yeah. Uh, it was something to do with, it's this suggested search, and it was only, for at least the time that I tried it, was only happening with uh, with with Google as the search engine. If you, if you switched your search engine to Bing, it didn't work, or if you went in and turned off the suggested searches, uh, then Google would work. Uh, it, and I don't know that that's been fixed. I've got a, I'm, I'm running the, I'm running the, the developer channel build of Edge, so it's updated weekly i think yeah and so i kind of just chalked that off as to well oops i did make some mention about it though and uh, a couple of folks wrote some articles on that so yeah i read something there's over the that if anybody hadn't seen it i mean if, yeah. if you have seen it you already know probably already know the fix because it's a lot of people made some noise 
Yeah, I saw, I read over the weekend, somebody was talking about that and uh, hitched that on the back end of the uh, the EU antitrust lawsuit with, uh, with Slack uh, against Microsoft Teams. And they tried to make the case that the same thing was happening with with edge and i'm like what are you talking about there's there's nothing antitrust going on it sounds like uh, you know from all appearances it's it, it just seems like there's a maybe a bad build there's something technically yeah, going that, on it was of course my take too yeah it's especially when you're running a the developer build you just you don't take stuff like that terribly seriously right. if it goes that for a few if it goes on for two or three weeks, then then you might get worried. There was one that, uh, and I don't know that anybody even else experienced this. I basically just chalked it off uh, to it being a developer issue, and it has since gone away. But I found that on Edge, um, if I had uh, like go four or five or six tabs open and opened a new one, mm -hmm. um, all the remaining tabs would get just squished all the way down to the uh, to the left edge of the uh, the window and uh, this little bitty tiny things and uh, as soon as you clicked one of those tabs it would expand back out again i figured well okay that's just a, a build issue and that went on for a couple of weeks and has since stopped so i assumed it was something that they found caught and cured and yep. i didn't see a whole lot of play on that so i figured that was strictly because i had a developer channel build running. Yeah, I'm looking down through it. Um, and uh, I, so I think where I read it, I'm looking to see if I can find it. But there's too much new activity it was over in tech community. Um, yeah, let's see do, do, do some other. There's a few edge things in there, but I don't <coughs> think about this specifically. I know that's where I read it was somebody was commenting over here and then ranting about it. Um, so just uh, and and for those folks that don't know what we're talking about uh, the the antitrust uh, the issue in the EU. So Slack filed a lawsuit a week ago, um, well two weeks ago, whatever. Uh, time just flies by now. Uh, right in the middle of the Inspire conference. So Microsoft was posting huge numbers, talking about new uh, uh, daily average users and great adoption and engagement and record revenue and kind of all those things. And then out of the blue, Slack does this uh, EU antitrust lawsuit against teams for uh, unfair practices. And uh, in its, uh, I commented on one article, there was a couple articles that came out that made some great points as well, that basically just called the whole thing hooey. It just, it, it just doesn't have legs to stand on, in our opinion. Yes, we're biased that we work within the, the ecosystem, um, but there's a lot of us that were, uh, uh, you know, on the side of uh, complaining about the last time Microsoft was in an antitrust issue because they had problems back in the 90s. And uh, I, I think we all recognized, uh, you know, those of us that were on the outside looking in uh, was valid. This time, not there. I mean, uh, you know, do you have the ability to install or uninstall teams and control which uh, uh, social tools are on your systems as an individual or as a company, yeah, you've got full control. There is no forced install. You have software that you, it's, it's like, it's like saying that, well, I installed all of office, but you forced me to use word. You don't want to use word, uninstall it or buy a SKU that doesn't include word. So not office or, you know, just don't have it as part of your deployment. You know, it's something similar, it. right? There are plenty of organizations that uh, use everything else and don't use Teams. They've just not deployed it yet, or others that use Teams in some organizations and others, like their sales organizations that have had it for a while, or their their engineering teams. They use Slack, and so you have the ability to use third party tools. The antitrust uh, uh, issues of the past do not exist today. No, so. No, yeah, and, not in this case. And, as far as I'm yeah, and I know that they they opened it the case in the EU because they thought that they'd have a little more uh, you know <laughs> leniency there. That uh, the EU is kind of uh, the ripe uh, environment for that kind of uh, uh, lawsuit. It just wouldn't fly here in the U.S. But I just I, I think Microsoft is pretty confident that it's not going to stand over there as well. And uh, my comment in the, the article I qu was quoted in 
I call the whole thing a PR stunt. And I've seen the, you know, that a similar comment from other articles that have been posted out. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, anyway, so that's what we're talking about, the referencing for people to bring up like problems, a technical glitch with the Edge browser is somehow now, uh, you know, it has to do with an antitrust related thing. I know people are, uh, were concerned that the Edge was being force installed as part of uh, Windows and uh, you know, that that's, again, not an antitrust thing for Microsoft to bundle their software in with their other software. The the issue is if they don't allow you to uninstall it or if they uh, inhibit you from installing other competitive apps and they're not doing that. So, no. yeah. <laughs> much much so, ado yeah, about nothing. I.e. in the old edge and the new edge and 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 Chrome and and Firefox, the looking at me from the from the taskbar, no. <laughs> well that's um yeah so i don't see anything how uh, uh you know around that that topic so i don't have any other updates but yeah yeah anyway if yeah, there's somebody true. somebody watching that has more info please uh, let us know if there's anything sure. else to be aware of um yeah anything else you you had the just the one topic or anything else you well, that, that's been pretty much it just as far as the stuff that I've been looking at. Uh, I've had other stuff that's been going on this morning, so I haven't been paying a whole lot of attention. But it was pretty quiet as far as stuff blowing up over the weekend. Yeah. Or anything rising to the level of, hey, pay attention to this, I guess would be as good a way as phrasing it as any. Yep. Well, I had a couple work related things going on last weekend but i was uh it, it, you know all last week for the most part i had my daughter my son-in-law and my grandson in town and so they left on saturday and uh my in-laws left they've been living with us they moved out on they left on sunday they're back in california for a month before they're back but moving into their own place they just had built and so it's been uh you know most of july as a good half of the month i had had the month off, you know, the, or two weeks off and was doing family stuff. And so it was a, a nice and much needed break. Although mm -hmm. I'm back and trying to catch up, I'm paying the price for having taken time off. Yeah, it works that way. Yeah. Um, one thing I did, I wanted to talk about, um, it's kind of a broader topic, but, um, so I, I've got a, a webinar happening on Thursday on a similar topic, but, a uh, good friend of mine, fellow MVP and RD, um, Benjamin Nylon with ShareGate. I don't know, Hal, if you know Ben. I have heard the name. Um, I've been trying to get him on. I've invited him to this thing, so he, he may uh, drop in one of these days. Um, he wrote an article, and then uh, another friend over at AvPoint, Hunter Willis, did this great article um, where both of them, uh, I went back and I found an article I wrote in 2011 and they uh, hit almost every point that I made in my article in 2011. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of renewing some of that content, some of the themes, but talking about uh, content sprawl, because it's been a theme that you've heard more and more about is uh, you have a lot of people, uh, you know, certainly you have people that have like the SharePoint history um, that have kind of moved into Microsoft Teams that understand, you know, team, uh, uh, you know, SharePoint and Exchange workloads that uh, Teams was was created on top of. But you have so many people that are, you know, net new into the Microsoft ecosystem through Teams. It's just, you know, had explosive growth. And so with the, with the launch of Teams three years ago, three and a half years ago, um, we some of us started asking questions and commenting on some of the potential for sprawl that Teams has. So I've got this webinar on on Thursday um, that I'm doing with a partner with uh, Ignite and uh, uh, E-G-N-Y-T-E. In fact, I should share the link. I'll do that here in a, in a minute. Um, but um, you know, on the, the topic of sprawl and where sprawl comes from, as so I've got a bunch of articles that I'll be uh, I'll be posting links to over the next few days and uh, some some other great content coming out of it. But something that talking to Benjamin about it, and he uh, 
so he kind of framed it the way that Shergate's looking at it. It's exactly the same uh, three points that Hunter made in his article over on the AvPoint site, um, which is looking at the provisioning process, so part of a preventative uh, a, a, you know, measure against sprawl, the uh, the proactive management activities that happen, uh, you know, while you're managing it, you know, actively is it's it's things are live, and then the third thing is what happens to the content and the sites that you create, the teams you create after the fact. How are you, what are your retention policies, the archival process, the deletion, the end of life of sites and content. And so it kind of puts up the, you know, the pre, the during, and the post around that. And it's it's fascinating. I was talking with uh, a couple of the guys over at Ignite today uh, on the topic of how fascinating like these topics are the same. If you've been in knowledge management, information management for any amount of time, these are the same cyclical, the terms that come up with each of the new technologies there's absolutely nothing new as far as the process, the methodology to handle sprawl. These are all governance issues uh, for mm -hmm. any system. But it's uh, anyway, it, it's just a fascinating space. It's I almost feel like I'm kind of the outsider peering in, seeing people ask these questions and just kind of, you know, I know they're going through some very real things. It, usually people become aware of the problems with sprawl and with governance when the pain becomes real. Mm. And so they are not amused by um, those that have been around a while um, kind of chuckling at their pains. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting space. There's a, you know, there's a, there's a lifetime of work for consultants in this space. Mm. So anyway, if people <clears throat> have questions about that too, um, you know, happy to answer anything around that. And I'm just uh, monitoring now. We've got a handful of people that are watching across the two locations. Uh, let me see if there's anything over in the teams. Uh, do, 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 do. I see questions that we answered this morning as well as last week. Um, and for those that aren't aware, those that are, are just catching this, uh, so we do compile both of the morning. Uh, so we, we do these recordings twice every Monday, so at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific, and then we combine the two. Uh, they are posted out on uh, YouTube. Uh, where you can find them, and then in the description on YouTube, as well as in a, a blog post on Buckley Planet, uh, I do a complete outline of every topic that we cover uh, across the two hours, and I provide timestamp links so that you can go in, do a quick search, find the topics that are of interest, and jump to that place in the videos. And this is uh, part two of episode 20. 20 weeks in a row, Hal. Wow. It's become a life life work for us. <laughs> uh, see, funniest question from this morning was the uh, the woman asking about how to kick or a way to stop kids from kicking others out of meetings. I liked yeah. that question. Uh, uh -oh, let's see. Let's see, somebody, I don't know if we can answer this. Uh, so I've not reviewed it in advance, but uh, Alvin asked a question. I'd like to ask a question. I created a meeting policy to disable cloud recording and assigned to a group in the Microsoft Teams Admin Center. But I tried to use different accounts, one to organize the meeting and one to join in the meeting. The join meeting account still can click the start recording. So is there any steps that I missed? Um, yeah, there's, um, we'll start the recording, but 
it, it's unclear to me. I'd have to go and play with this to 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 know. But um, is it is, is the user who's joining me at a meeting is still able to start a recording, but are they limited to record it locally only? Or yeah, I'm not sure. Members or guests? Yeah, that's the other question. Members or guests? Yeah, I've not I've not played with this, so I don't know specifically, but that's one that we can follow up on. Um, let me see. If there's a couple comments here. Yeah, and somebody makes makes a good point. This is uh, it's always a, a a reference. If you change a policy, uh, especially out of user permissions, it could take time for that policy or that new permission to take effect. It could take 24 to 48 hours for some changes uh, to uh, be updated within your tenant. Very true. Mm. Yeah, and somebody else making the comment that it could take even longer with uh, so many people using the platform today and while they're trying to keep things performant, which is a made up Microsoft Word, which now, you know, performant. Um, but yeah, Microsoft is focused so much on performance that it could delay, uh, could, you know, slow down some of these changes on your tenant. Um, Yeah, so I think some other people asking similar questions saying, hey, look, somebody can always use a third party tool like Camtasia and record. So are you trying to stop people from being able to record? Like you're not going to be able to stop somebody. If I'm a guest, uh, you know, an external user guest in a meeting and you're not recording it because you, you tell people, I don't want this recorded. I, as an external user sitting at home, can use Camtasia and can capture the entire video and all the dialogue and there's nothing you would you wouldn't be aware of that and there's nothing you can do against that very true so i still think that that control of limiting the recording to cloud i don't know if that is you're limiting that only for the admin and there's a specific step you needed to take to uh turn off recording for um for members and users or guest users uh, or if there's just nothing that you can do. I'm not entirely sure if a guest user can even has access to recording in the yeah. meetings that I've been in as a guest. I do not. So Yeah, I don't think you can. But as a member, <clears throat> as a member, you, you would be able to unless you specifically turned off meeting recordings because you can yeah. turn it off across the board, not allow anybody to record anything. Yeah, and if, uh, as typical fashion, people are um, questioning the uh, um, her uh, reasoning for wanting to turn off recording in the first place. I say the same thing is that I, I recommend to all of yeah. my clients that by default they have automatic recording of meetings. Uh, it, it's, it's something you don't want recorded. You can always turn that off before it begins or as it begins and not capture that. Um, but it is such an important information asset that I highly recommend you you keep it straightforward and simple. It's just you know, all meetings are recorded, automatically captured and transcribed in the system, and that record then is stored and searchable. Absolutely. That's the important part. You may not remember what goes on, on the meeting, particularly if it's something juicy and a bit complex, Having that recording as a resource to go back and, and, and rewatch and, and make sure that you understand the concepts, methodologies, or what have you is just priceless. Yep. In, in my view, anyway. I've seen another, there's been a couple questions, and I saw a couple similar questions over on the tech community. Uh, Ricardo says uh, he's asking a question about Teams as the main phone system. Um, he says, all, as you all, uh, you all know right now, many companies are cutting bills or at least trying. Today, I was tasked with trying to find a cheaper solution and migrate our current phone system that is cloud-based 
over to Microsoft Teams. Is anyone here willing to share experience on this or give some advice? And I've not, look, I'm not, I've got a, a tiny little company. Uh, you know, I'm the principal. I've got part-time people. And everything that we do, meetings that we have, everything is using 100% PC for the audio components there. And it can be it, it, with people in lower bandwidth situations. I know I'm going sideways slightly on the question, uh, but you know, people dialing in will find a you know a better connection, a more solid connection uh, through a landline, um, you know, or through a mobile device, through a phone, than uh, the, through their computer. But uh, I don't know anybody. I hear of them, but I don't know firsthand. Anybody that's 100% moved over to using Teams as their phone system. How have you run anybody like that? The the only thing that I've gotten is from some of the meetings that I've attended, and that's principally larger organizations that looking at that sort of thing. From my end of the world, uh, with smaller, you know, 100 people, 200 people, less than that, businesses, that's just not even come up yet. Yeah, I mean it's it's nice. So I've I've used it, um, and it's a nice feature to have. I actually uh, uh, you know, I had the experience my first team while working at Microsoft. So back in two thousand six, where we had uh, you know the first communicator link enabled phone. So the precursor to the precursor to the precursor to what is now Teams. Um, I think it's three or four generations later um, from, from that device. But it was fantastic to be able to go into Exchange, uh, you know, click on somebody's email, um, float over, see the phone icon, click on that, and it dials to the phone, speaker mm -hmm. phone. L love that capability. Yeah. So I, I, I get that people want to move that. But I'm, as we often say with these, as Hal will attest, for these uh, office hour sessions, uh, none of us here do telephony. <laughs> nope, not yet. We're not the best people to ask. Oh, Perry uh, wants to know more about how to kick people out of meetings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. Frankly, I have never tried. It's <laughs> that, 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 that to me, I mean, this, this, this to me is back in the old the IRC chat days where you went into a chat room and you could kick people out and fights over that sort of stuff. So, I mean, I, I kind of, I've lost lost on, on, on doing that sort of stuff. Well, Perry, I'm showing you, you on can, screen right now. You can see on the right side in the, the live stream. So you open up the little people picker thing up at the top there and um, – uh, open up the participants and you click on the ellipses like I'm doing right next to Hal's name. And at the bottom there is remove participant. Uh -huh. So if I did that, Hal would be out of here. Yeah, uh, that's, gotcha. that's a simple. But uh, in, in, Perry, in case you missed the beginning of the discussion around that, it was, uh, I think, in the education uh, scenario. So with their tenant, uh, I think it was a teacher who was having problems with some of her students that were kicking each other out of a meeting. And our, our first response is, uh, well, it seems, it seems like the only way that they could do that is if they had admin control. So they had, so she had students that had the wrong level of permissions. Exactly. And so that would be the first thing to go and do is make sure that she's not inviting students in and giving them admin control. It sounds like pretty clever students and funny to uh, eject each other as a prank. Sounds like something I would do. <laughs> uh, you know, that's the thing. I've just never been in a meeting where I wanted to eject anybody. So that's a, uh, that qualifies as a, I just learned something new. Most meetings, I feel like I'd like to eject somebody. Yeah, and the primary thing I just by following along with you and the looking at the same list and the same sort of sets of ellipses, all I can do is mute you. I cannot kick you out. Yeah, it's largely I assume yeah. because I am not a member of your tenant. I am a guest. You know, but that, but how all that is is that's that's akin to doing la 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 la. So, yeah. 
will go on. The rest of the meeting will happen right here, but you'll just not be able to hear me. Yeah. Which is not a bad thing. I, uh, let's see. Uh, any other questions here? Um, let's see. Any other? You know, anybody else that's watching the live stream? Is there anything else we can answer for you? Help you with? Any burning questions? Things you've run into? Uh, oh, here was something. I don't think we we got to uh, this morning. Alex is asking uh, around the search capabilities and filtering within Teams. Says, how can you find hundreds to thousands of teams and their channels when you use the filter or search feature and only comes up with the general channel for each team? Uh, that so means you do a sub channel search? Or a well, sub -team? So, so the rest of his question says, that means if you don't have the team visible and browse to it, the search filter capability doesn't list the channels besides general. How are you guys dealing with that? So, yeah, I'm confused by the experience that he's describing. Because if you go into Teams and you have the search bar up on top, and you enter in your search term, and you know the results will come over in the left column, you can then go into the additional filters, and you can select a specific team, it will then give you the ability to filter to, you know, to search across all channels within that team or select a specific channel and refine your search results. So right there, you are, you're getting that left, that initial result, you're getting across all channels and all teams that you have permissions to. And if you have permissions to hundreds to thousands of teams and channels, then that your re search result will reflect that and you'll likely want to use the refiners to uh, dig down in the specifics. Um, I don't believe that you can in this kind of the simplified refiners, you can't select, let's say you want to search within two teams. Um, so you can't do that. You're limited. You can do everything or you can search within a specific team or within a specific channel there's no way to multi-select multiple teams or once searching within a single team multi-select channels does that make sense I, I mean a lot of people are asking for more robust features around search within teams and i get that um, the other thing that you can do is you can search from within uh, Delve, within the Office experience, if you're logged in via the Bing um, search browser. And again, um, is, if you're logged into these environments uh, on your desktop, it should, it should search from and find results in all of those things. There's what, four different places where you can kind of, you know, like major search destinations now? Something like that. Yeah, hopefully that helps. Um, Perry has another question. Uh, she says, uh, I've run into issues with users seeing duplicate contacts showing up in Teams. And yeah, I mean, so... Perry, are you, do you have admin access? Are you able to go in and look at those profiles and see if they are truly duplicates? Are they created, um, are, are they created in Azure AD? Do they have like that, the global icon that they're an Azure AD um, profile and then one that's not indicating that they were, uh, you know, they could have been created as, uh, as guests within Outlook, for example, but then set up separately as contacts within Azure. So that's that's one way that can happen. Um, otherwise, you just have your admin go in and uh, you know look through the user roles and clean those out. I would just be careful that uh, when you're removing a user, um, even though it may have been incorrectly set up, remember that you have 
uh, in theory, content and conversations that are attached to that individual. So the best thing to do is to, uh, you know, maybe to, you know, rename that that profile as duplicate, um, but leave alone so that, you know, historical record is still in place. Um, I don't know, Hal, anything else you'd add to that? No, not that I can think of on our hand. That pretty well covers it. Yeah, that that's the one. Look, there there might be something else. Uh, I, yeah, looked like users had done that global and guest invites. I mean, that's the scenario that I've seen personally. Um, yeah, in fact, uh, last week I cleaned some of those out. So I just logged in as the admin when the admin console. And uh, for me, I mean, I knew that there was no actual uh, behavior, no no actions taken by those non-Azure AD profiles. And so I just deleted those. But again, if there's any kind of activity, yeah, this is, um, th that's actually a, a, an interesting point. One of the uh, uh, requests that I've seen since pretty much day one since the announcement of teams before it was actually launched um you know people were asking well how do i go in and archive a team archive a team and microsoft of course went and created ways a lot of people when they were saying archive a team what they were really talking about was cleaning up the navigation you know too many channels too many teams and Microsoft added some AI capabilities so that it would, you know, teams that you're not accessing on a regular basis, it kind of hides them. It pulls them out of your daily view. They're still there. You can go unhide them, open them up. You're still a member of. It doesn't change anything except change your visibility to them. Similarly, in a team that you might be active in, but you might have, you know, 50 different channels, but you're only using mm -hmm. actively three of them. Um, you might have permissions to the other 47. Man, I never want to be part of a team that has 50 channels in it. Oh, really? <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's, or my, my, uh, no, I mean, it's bad enough, at least from my point of view, uh, having some of the uh, teams that you see over in the MVP realm that have got 16 17 channels and it's like good grief how are you supposed to keep up with this so yeah. 50 wow yeah that, that would be that would be ugly yeah and wasif says something that just sounds so positive he says says y'all sound tired from this morning <laughs> that's because we're tired from this morning <laughs> uh, yeah it's been a long day of looking at screens yeah yeah. Yeah, and, and Wasa, for your other issue this morning, I was thinking about that too. I know we didn't fully answer your question. Um, uh, yeah, and if you want to um, send an email to office hours at collabtalk.com, let me type this right here. Uh, I'll respond. Uh, no, with. Mm. All right, just sent you that. Um, yeah, definitely take a look at that because there are some folks that we can um, send this around to and might be, be able to get a little bit of traction. Yeah, like like Neil would be great. You know, Microsoft employee um, can definitely, you know, if not help himself uh, answer the questions, might be able to uh, get you some traction with the support organization. Absolutely. Yeah. What are friends for if not to give out the <laughs> personal emails of other friends? <laughs> Put them on the hot seat. Yes, indeed. Vote them in. Vote them in as sergeant at arms when they aren't present. There you go. Yeah. And Perry's talking about 20 channels. Nah, 20 channels I can do. Uh, because, look, not everybody's going to use every single channel within that. I, again, I might be active in three or four of those. I might have permission into some of those other um, but no, when, it, when, in fact, I, I brought this up before at the MVP summit, uh, two years ago, 
when they announced that they were increasing the number of people that you could add to a team up to whatever, what it was, 5,000 or whatever it was, the first big jump. Yeah. Um, you had about 200 MVPs in this room for this announcement. And they were, all, the Microsoft people were all excited when they announced that. And the room was more booze than cheers. It was uh, people, um, I'll just say that, uh, like, I was a big fan of the messaging around the inner loop, outer loop and a way of kind of describing the the which tool to use when problem between SharePoint and Teams and Yammer and things like that. And my first response was that um, giving 5,000 people access to a team makes absolutely no sense and breaks the primary use cases of the product. Where Teams works the best is when it is a functional team that is date and task driven. A uh, great example, and I, I'm not trying to say that you can't use it for these other scenarios. Bear with me. Um, the 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 fundamental, the the, the core profile though, um, is like a team for. I, so I used to run an operations team with a tier two support team, and so I had about a dozen employees, and we could have a team that was for. Uh, uh, the resolving of tickets for the tier two team. And there could be a channel then for each customer or a channel even for each ticket that's opened. And so do I need to have access as the manager to every one of those tickets? Yes, because I need to be able to go there and review. But do the other 120 uh, 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 support reps need to have access to every ticket, every discussion going on, every channel? No, they don't. You pull the four or five people in that are relevant to solving that, having that discussion. It That that channel might be open, that discussion might be live for five hours or five months or, or, or permanent. And then from there, you may take what was developed and say, hey, this needs to be part of our thought leadership and it's, you know, let's make it searchable within uh, you know, if it's you use Yammer that way or SharePoint for archiving those assets and move those the documentation created. But for that active discussion, the threaded discussion for the work team solving that, it was about you know solving that ticket or that project or that event. So it had a time, it had a scope, a limited number of people within that. Um, you might add more people to give them visibility to a discussion. But if you are, if you have a broader uh, community discussion where you don't know who might bring something to the table and your you know, so ideas and you're keeping things more of a you know a knowledge building, knowledge management for the organization, then Yammer is the better is a community building tool. It's better suited for that scenario where you don't where it's an open ended question and you don't know who the the feedback is going to come from. When it's specific, when you know your project team, you know what you have to go and accomplish, or you're building the plan to go and execute off that, that's Teams. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, and like Wasif is saying, I just hope people don't use channels like WhatsApp group. Exactly. Exactly. That, that That's like a, you, you have a, like, let's say that I, I run, you know, support operations and there's a couple hundred people in the organization. I might have a, uh, you know, a Yammer community for support operations for those 200 people. So we can talk about what's going on, broad announcements for the organization, that kind of stuff. That is a better fit than over in Teams, um, which should be work-related. It's it's that it's the hub for teamwork. If you're looking for community building, broader stuff, it's elsewhere. If you're looking to just broadcast information out um, and store knowledge assets, information assets, that's what your portal is for built on SharePoint. So use the right tool for the right reasons. Yeah. Um, and I'll butcher the name, so I'll call you Satya. Satya says, uh, picture slider and video not supporting in SharePoint online. Why? And any other option, please explain. Yeah. Um, 
that's a, uh, you know, Sean might be better suited for uh, answering that question. Yeah. Satya, I, I sent an email to, with your specifics, your question. Uh, we've got a couple SharePoint people. I've just not been up to speed and knowing some of the parity issues between the uh, SharePoint on-prem and online to know why some of those pieces aren't there. Not working a lot in SharePoint these days, doing more in Teams. But if you, and I'll reply here, uh, let's see, send this question to uh, office hours at clabtalk.com. There we go. Oh, cool. and of course, I responded this to the wrong one. I clicked on it. That's just a how that works. Yeah. Let me go back. Uh, there we go. The time that I click. That's okay. one of the things that kind of bothers me about a chat. If you wind up wanting to reply to someone instead of creating a new thread in Teams, it's sometimes difficult to see the little re reply box down at the bottom, and you just get, click in the window and start typing and hit send before you realize you, you, you just you just sent that to the whole channel, not as a reply to this one thing here. And, and the problem then is, well, that's no big deal, but you can't erase it. Right. You cannot delete it from that point. So it's like, ah, oh, well, bear the shame. Somebody say, what are you talking about? I'm sorry, I was replying. Please look up. Yeah. Yeah, and Perry makes a great point. It says, with SharePoint, it could be the browser, it could be the page type, the modern or classic. Yeah, and those talking about those specific uh, web parts and why they may or may not work. I mean, yeah, so I'd, I'd have to go poke around to probably Google it and find the answer. But you send it to that, that email, and there's a couple, you know, Sean would probably be able to answer that in 30 seconds or less. Um, but, you know, Sean and Neil, both uh, hardcore SharePoint folks, and will probably know the specific answer. That's why we created the DL. So all of us get these questions now. So it'll be part of our promotions here. We'll put it in the artwork uh, going forward. I just neglected to do it today. Why it took us 20 episodes to create a, a, an email? I don't know. <laughs> Effort or lack thereof. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, and then Satya calls me Christina. So I, there's a slight. <laughs> Must not have liked our answer. Had to insult me. Call me different name, but. I'm just, just well, kidding, either that or auto correct strikes again. And that yeah, it could be that too. You know, particularly if that was on Facebook and it decides to pick up one of his friends and he doesn't quite yeah. catch it. Uh, I have that problem all the time. Is it's the most common you know, transposing the <laughs> I, I and A at the end of my name. So, yeah, um, yeah, just having fun with you, Satya. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we got. Another 11 minutes. Um, let me refresh here, see if there's any other questions come in. Still have a handful of people watching. Yeah, if there's any other questions that we can tackle. Anything else coming up this week, Hal? Um, no, not that I'm aware of. Um, don't think there are any big conferences or anything. Uh, Ignite is around the corner. It's what, yep. four, five, six weeks away. So that's certainly one to keep an eye out for. Yep. That's going to be online and uh, certainly going to be looking forward to that one. I have not been to an official Ignite. The last one I was present for was when it was still Tech Ed and that was in 2013. Um, I actually volunteered for, I think it was the first Ignite that was in, uh, that started off in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah, and, that and uh, I actually got accepted to come and be a booth day, right? Booth representative. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> and uh, and uh, had everything all set up. Figured I could do it like I did, uh, like like I did uh, 
the tech ed at Houston in 2013, Houston being a big place, but I didn't reckon on what Chicago wanted for housing. And when it turns out that the, uh, yeah. you know, the Motel 6 is $400 a night, it's like, wait a moment, please. Yep. And the only place that you can find reasonable housing is 25 miles away. And, um, well, so that one didn't work out so good. Now, had they had had I been accepted for the one in Orlando, well, I had done Orlando. Um, again, that was a tech ed. And I believe yep. that was 20, it was either 2012 or 20. Yeah, it was 2012. Um, and once again, there was reasonable housing that was within, worked out pretty well because they, they, they always have um, hotels set up on a specific bus route for people to stay at. And this this one little, um, I think it was, a, whoa, I'm going to forget what, it, what name it was, which is probably just as well not giving them a plug. <laughs> but nevertheless, it was at one of the, your basic budget motels. It was right next to a, another motel that was on the bus route. So I had to walk about oh, uh, 50, 60 yards and I was at the bus stop and it worked out quite handsomely. But not yeah, Chicago. I, that, I was at those, all the, each of those events. That, that was a really good, so that was the first, when they transitioned over to Ignite and that first event, a lot of people didn't like that, but my, uh, my hotel was the, so I was as a speaker, so I was in with all the Microsoft people. We were the last ones picked up on the bus before the convention center and the first ones dropped off. So it was great. Yeah. And of course the buses went through that little segment underground to get to mm -hmm. the convention center. So bypass all the city traffic. But uh, yeah, I did a, a session at that event where I had, there were over 1500 people in that room. It was just packed long room. It was uh uh, the, one of the first uh, sessions that I did, uh, so it was while I was, so I was still back with the ISV, but the first session that I did um, where I went and just did this independent research effort on the future role of the IT pro. Because you remember that when it was the Microsoft was starting to really do their messaging push towards everything towards the cloud. And one of the first freak out moments, especially within the SharePoint world, where people saying, what's happening to my IT pro, my admin role, if everything's moving to the cloud and you know uh, MSPs, CSPs will be able to service um, the things that we're doing for our day job for our customers, they'll be able to go to these uh, uh, cloud providers. You know What's gonna be the role of the IT pro going away? And so I did a bunch of research where I interviewed uh, about three dozen or so IT pros from within the community, from different fields of expertise, but mostly in the SharePoint world. Um, I did, you know, got a bunch of uh, uh, paid for, you know, Gartner and IDC research, and and actually talked with a couple analysts, talked with some, uh, interviewed a few uh, well-known and regarded um, uh, um, uh, reporters. And pulled through this day together and then shared that. And uh, so it was, uh, you know, pretty proud of that session. I think the recordings from that, are, the audio is all up there, but not the, the video. But, um, uh, yeah, the I think I still have that research out there. I need to go dig that and dig that up and find that link to it. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, that was. And then the following year, did it move to, I'm trying to remember the, the order of those or where they've been. There's one in Chicago, Atlanta, Chicago, or Orlando. So Orlando. Chicago just once. No, uh, it was twice. Was it twice? It was twice in Chicago. Was it Tech they Ed the first time? The first and then... year. So there was twice in Chicago, and then they moved it to Orlando. Okay. Yeah, I thought for some reason it was only one year it because then they moved it because there's one in Atlanta. It was supposed to be two years, and they moved it. Yeah, I think you're right. Now that you mentioned that, I believe you're right. Yeah, and they signed a multi-year deal and at, you know at, down in Orlando and mm -hmm. and then moved it, everything to Vegas and the rest is history. Yeah. So yay, because who doesn't love going to Vegas twice a year in July and September? Uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For someone and that doesn't if you drink, to be a broadcast engineer, you can add April to that. So yeah. That's where the NAB hits. Or would say, 
pre pre COVID, of course, uh, not drinking or gambling makes uh, Vegas a boring place. <sighs> yeah. Anyway. Well, I really don't drink and I really don't gamble. But Vegas is still a fun place to go around and look at the stuff and watch the lights. I and I, I have to admit, the very best time I ever had in Las Vegas from the standpoint of gambling was the first NAB convention that I went to, which would probably have been in the early 80s, something like that, if not the late 70s. Um, and uh, just walking up and down, uh, oh, and I forget the name of the main street because I don't go there that often, the strip, there we go. Just walking up and down the strip, I was able to, by playing quarter slot machines, make enough money to keep a a 12 ounce can of Coca-Cola in my hands at all times. And there must've been like three of them as I was walking up and down, looking at things and taking pictures and so forth. So I felt really good about that. That was the first, the best positive gambling experience I believe I've ever had. Other than that, places like Vegas, it's better I should mail him a check and say, I would have lost this. Yeah. Hey, Perry has a question. Uh, is there any recommendations for keeping fresh in, in, in an admin environment if you happen to not have access when between jobs? So Azure, SharePoint, et cetera. So, and I don't know the answer to this, uh, uh, Hal. Do you know, is, is demo.microsoft.com, is that open to non-MVPs? Is that, can people just go and, and request access? Have you used that? I have not. I know that it's there and uh, no, I, I don't know right offhand. So it's been it's been a little while since I've been out since I used my own tenant tenant for for demos, but it it's now if you go to you know demo.microsoft.com it redirects to cdx.transform.microsoft.com because that's a much better URL. Anyway, um, yeah, look at that. Log, you can log in. Um, I, so I I'm just I'm just not sure if that is you know th those of us that are. Uh, you know, MVPs and RDs that are given special access to use this, or if you're able to go in and anybody can go in um, using their Microsoft profile, go and create that, uh, establish that. So same profile that you get into tech community with, um, and, uh, and it has those virtual machines that you can set up and play with. So there's a lot of people, um, and let me, uh, let, me, let me grab the URL to that. There's a lot of people that when they um, demo conferences, because those environments only last for 30 days. Um, first question would be whether a non-MVP can go and do that. I believe so, but just you know, try it out. Um, but um, but even even if you have access, they only last for 30 days. Um, I may it might be that this special. Uh, uh, access that MVPs have. I know there's a number of MVPs that are saying, you know, hey, I, I'm I'm utilizing these same. I'm built. I've spent all this time building out data and stuff within it to demo this stuff. Can I keep it longer than 30 days? And MVPs are given kind of special access to renew that and update that. Um, I don't know if it's just a, like 30 days at a time or if it's a longer period. Like I said, I, I use my own tenant for my demos. So I, I've used the demo like uh, SharePoint Saturday last year. Um, I built something out the day before um, our, our event and used that in my demos in two presentations. And it works great. As long as you have strong Wi-Fi, you're good to go. And... Well, yeah, you know, we're we're at the top of the hour. Let's Hal, anything else pop into your mind you wanted to chat about? No, that's pretty much it. I'm kind of surprised Sean didn't show up, but uh... yeah, I can't remember. I thought he said he was going to be here, but um, then again, he's got his his new computer system he's putting together, so yes. maybe something didn't go so well today. Well, that or he got all the the, the parts for it, and this is madly assembling and simply lost track of time, which certainly would be possible when you're putting together something with the horsepower that uh, from the pictures I've seen, he's uh, he's he's assembling there. Yeah, well, I uh, yeah, exactly. I, I think he's going to he's going to have the uh, we're going to envy him for the device that he's putting together. So um, 
But uh, but anyway, well, those that uh, tuned in, thanks a lot for participating. And uh, from Hal and myself, uh, <laughs> the recording uh, I should have. I'm going to try to tonight put it all in. I've got a couple other things I have to try and wrap up this evening. Um, but definitely tomorrow afternoon. The recording will be out on YouTube. So you can go out to uh, youtube.com slash C slash collab talk and uh, find all the recordings, just the Microsoft Community Office Hours. I'll post it when I get the blog post up. That'll have the link list with all the timestamps of all, every topic over the morning and evening sessions. You can email us at officehours at collabtalk.com and we'll respond all week long. So uh, we're going to start promoting that more and more. Um, and uh, if you get stumped, um, ask us. And we're we're putting together a a, a good group of, of uh, MVPs uh, on that DL. So whether or not they per, they perform or perform, if they join and participate in these uh, uh, AMA panel discussions or not, uh, people should even respond during the week at any time. So. Yep. All right. I'm going to go take a break, walk the dogs, get some dinner. See you next yeah. week. So, Hal, good to talk to you. And we'll see, As you, always. We'll see you again at 8 a.m. Pacific next Monday. Uh, I'll be here. All right. Talk to you later. That's Danny. Take care. Bye. Bye.